Hey, what's going on? My name is Juan, and today we're going to take a look at populating fields within gravity forms. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing we're going to take a look at is going to be populating fields dynamically using query strings. So if you don't know what a query string is, it is the uh, funky string of text at the end of a URL. So on um, so on this page here, you can see this uh, question mark page equals GF edit forms and ID equals one. That is actually the query string. It is separated by a question mark and it is followed by key value pairs. So page is the key and GF edit forms is the value. Same with ID. Uh, ID is the key and one is the value. So basically this is selling WordPress. We're on the page GF edit forms and we want to edit the form with the ID of one. So we are going to be using a, a similar structure to edit some forms on the front end. So I created a form. Um, I'm using a simple single line text a hidden field and a drop down menu. So I also created a page populating fields and I simply put in this form. So let's go and take a look at how we could populate this first input text. So within our form editor, let's go ahead and go to uh, click on the field, click on advanced. And at the bottom, you can see allow field to be populated dynamically. So if we tick that box, we have a parameter name. Um, we can go ahead and enter any name we like. I'm going to go ahead and use zombie slayer. And we can update that form. So on the front end here, let's go ahead and refresh. And the way you, you use a question mark and you will type in the parameter name, which is zombie slayer, and then we'll pass it a value, right? So the value is gonna be Daryl. So if we hit enter, we get Daryl. Um, we could change this to Rick and this would update. Same with Carl and it keeps updating. Chances are your user is not gonna be typing a query string on your website. So we could actually create an, an anchor um, to link to this page. So I went ahead and I created a zombie slayer page and I typed in, so I grabbed this, I grabbed this URL and I created an anchor tag, which is a href and the href will equal to um, the page that we want and the query string that we want to append, which is gonna be zombie slayer followed by the name and within the anchor tag, we go ahead and pass in the name. So we got Carl, Rick, Glenn, Michonne, and Maggie. So if we take a look at the front end of this page, we have a list of names. We can go ahead and click one, and this will take us to our form and populate our field. So we can do this with, with any um, link. So we'll go ahead and open up Carl and Rick. So you can see Carl is there and Rick is there. So that is one way you could go about populating a field using a query string. Um, one example that I've used this is I have created a website for a lady that breeds dogs. So basically with each litter, she would add a new dog. And if somebody wanted more information on that specific dog, they would click uh, a link on that dog's profile and it will take them to a contact page. And I will, and I was passing the dog's name using a hidden field. So if we take a look at the hidden field, we can go ahead and pass it in the same parameter or something different. So if we type in zombie slayer for the parameter name update and we can click Carl. And if we inspect the element and we go down to the second, we have, this is going to be the hidden field and the value is Carl. So you could pass these in. Um, if you want the user to see, you can pass it in an input box or if you wanted it to be hidden, you could actually pass it in a hidden field. And that way you could do some processing on the back end. You could actually fire off different notifications or confirmations depending on what the value of a hidden field is. So that is just one way you could use dynamic field population. So now let's go ahead and take a look at populating a dropdown with a list of posts. So populating a dropdown list is a bit more work and we're going to have to dig into some code. So first let's start off by creating a forms.php file within our lib directory. So within our functions.php file, we will call that file include our we'll do forms file and we will include forms.php so it's in this file we'll go ahead and open up php tags and um simple dog block okay so within here we're gonna add a filter now the filter we want to hook into is going to be g form pre-render now if we use this filter alone this will affect all forms but if we um, add in a suffix, which is underscore, and the ID number, which is going to be one in our case, this will modify only um, that specific form. 
So the next thing we want to do is the hook, our function to call. So this is going to be QT populate post. So we'll go ahead and create that function here. And we will pass in and we will pass in the form object. Okay, so right off the bat, we'll go ahead and return the form. When we're working with filters, you're always going to return. Okay, and we are going to start off with a for each loop. And then within this for each loop, we are going to target the form fields. So form, and we will target the index of fields as ampersand field. And that is just passing the variable by reference. And we're going to use a bit of defensive programming. So if the field ID does not equal three, and if you take, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So our field ID is three. So if it's either one or two, we are going to continue. So now that we are in here, we are going to use get post, right? So we'll grab our post with post equal get post. And we'll pass in an array and we'll just do post per page will equal to 10. All right, so we'll go ahead and instantiate a variable. We'll do choices equal array. And we'll create one more for each loop within this for each. We'll do for each post as post. And this is where we will assign the choices variable. So we'll grab choices. So we'll grab the choices array and start passing in some data. So the first thing we want is we want the text to be post, post title. And the value, we want that to be the post ID. And we want to pass is selected. Well, that will be equal to false. Let's go ahead and clean that up with PHP using option command L. Last thing we want to do is assign the field choices to the array that we just created, which is choices and save. So now let's take a look at the front end. Let's go ahead and go to populating fields and refresh. And as you can see, we have a list of the last 10 blog posts. And if we select one, we take a look at the value. Um, the value is going to be the title name. So I'm going to call the post title. It was grabbing the title, but we're going to specify that we do want the post title for a value and our name. So as you can see here, um, to, let's go ahead and see if we could var dump all of our posts. So if we var dump post and refresh, actually see, okay, so this looks a bit, this doesn't look too pretty. So if we open up the terminal and Vagrant SSH real quick and turn debugging on. We can do X debug, turn that to on. And if we refresh, now we get some cleaner debug information. So these are all of our options we have to pass. So we were passing in the post title, which has capital letters and spaces. If you wanted to clean that up and use um, maybe a better name, and if you want to replace all lower cases and spaces with um, hyphens, you can go ahead and use the post name. So we can go ahead and change that to the value to post name. We could target any one of these that we wanted to. And let's go ahead and comment out that bar dump and refresh and take a look one last time. And as you can see, the option is now with a little cleaner value that you want to store. You could probably store this so you get um, run some logic against that. But that is how you would populate a drop down field within gravity forms. So hopefully you found this video um, helpful. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You can follow me at WP Zombies. And uh, thank you for watching.